What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're gonna go over how and why I create logos in DaVinci Resolve 18. Some of the things that I think about along the way and some of the design aspects that I keep in mind when creating a logo. So I personally do a lot in DaVinci Resolve. I edit video in Resolve. I also do a lot of animations in Resolve. I also make thumbnails in Resolve, as well as I make logos in Resolve. Now, you may ask, why would you make logos in Resolve when there's Illustrator and Photoshop and all these other programs that you could use? Uh, for me personally, if a client asks me to make a logo, then it usually means I'm gonna have to animate it at some point. And the easiest way to do that and to kind of make the logo with that in mind is to just go ahead and create it in Resolve. That way I have all the design elements in Resolve there to manipulate, to animate, and to do pretty much whatever I want to. I could bring over some design elements from Photoshop, but if I bring over a square from Photoshop into Resolve, I can animate that square kind of. I could, you know, move it from side to side or make it wiggle. I could, you know, scale it up or down. But what if I wanted to morph that square into a triangle or a star? If I just go ahead and make everything in Resolve, then I not only have full control but I could also save it as a macro as you've seen in other videos and then just use it in other projects whenever I need it. So let's go ahead and hop on in and get this started. So I've got a brand new project, it's 4K and it's in 30 frames a second. I usually always uh, make logos in a 4K timeline with 30 frames a second, sometimes 60 depending on what I want the animation to be, but at the very least 30 frames a second uh, because it's better to have more frames than less when it comes to animation. Uh, so uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just make a new fusion composition by right clicking in the media pool and then clicking new fusion composition. And I can name this logo. And you can see that's at 30, frame, uh, 30 frames a second and I can click create. And then I can drop this into our timeline, zoom on in and right click and then open in fusion page. Uh, so a couple things that I keep in mind when making a logo, and they're just general things to think about when animating or designing things. And uh, number one, when it comes to logos, you want to make them simple and memorable. So they're kind of easy to, uh, to point out of a crowd. If you see a bunch of logos on, let's say some kind of banner, you want to make something that's easy to say like, oh, that's obviously this brand that I've seen before. Something recognizable is a better way to put it. And then number two, something that easily fits into a circle. Uh, because a lot of the time with social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, uh, they'll throw the logo into the profile picture spot, which is often in a circle. And so you kind of want to think about a few things, like how is this logo going to look on the website, maybe in the middle of a website or on the left or right hand side of a website? Uh, how would this look in a circle or how would it look in a square as well? Because those are usually typically the spaces and places that you'll find a logo in, a square, a circle, or in a banner of a website. So with those things in mind, the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of create our floor. Um, and by that, I, I just mean our background. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is make a background with the background node, and then I'll connect this to a merge node, and then I'll connect this merge to our media out. Uh, and if you're not super familiar with Fusion, uh, there are some simpler Fusion videos I've made in the past that kind of run through uh, the tiny minutia and the little details of Fusion that you may need to know just to navigate around. But I'll try to point out as much as uh, I can as I go along here in case you are kind of at the beginner stage. And so right now we have our background into our merge, uh, which is into our media out. And merge is pretty much how everything connects in Fusion. So you need a merge to pretty much connect anything new. And I like to think of this, or I like to work in Fusion as almost if it's layers. Uh, so usually you have your, you know, your layer, uh, layer one, and then layer two, and then layer three, layer four, and layer one is usually always on top. So if I go back to the edit page, for instance, you see video one, anything I put over this is going to pretty much be on top of our fusion composition. So if I put anything in the video two section, that's going to lay on top. So think the same way as I kind of run through this, as I go back to fusion, uh, we have our floor here, which is our background and our merge. And then let's say I make our background white. Uh, I personally like to design in black and white because if I can make something that looks good in simple black and white, then it'll also look good when embellished with uh, with colors or any flair or effects. Um, but I usually like to start in black and white just because black and white usually always hits. If you can't tell, that's kind of my style. <laughs> but also, uh, if you can make it in black and white, then it'll usually look good in color as well. Uh, so let's say our background is just 
this uh, white background and this is our floor and we're kind of working up from here. So anything we put on top of this will be on top of our background uh, and in front of our background. So in our merge, we have our background plugged into our background and then this is our foreground. And so let's say I want to add a text or let's say let's add it as a shape. So I'll add another background and then plug this into another merge and then we'll move this merge on top of the other one and then we'll plug this straight into the foreground of the merge. And now our black background is hiding our white background, which we have over here. So for now, we'll take this background off of this second screen. And with our black background uh, selected, I'll click the ellipse circle, which will make a mask. And if you were to look at this in another window, just the background, you can see our mask around our black. And so now we have a black circle on top of our white background. I hope you're kind of sticking with me here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make this a little bit smaller. Maybe I'll go to 0.3 and width and height, just go to 0.3, making our circle a good bit smaller. And then what I'm gonna do is select all of these and just hit Control C to copy these and then click off and hit Control V to paste. And now we pretty much have that same layer, a duplicate of that same layer. And I'm going to plug this into the foreground of our merge two, uh, essentially placing this above uh, our, our black circle. So now we have a black circle above in front of our black circle. And I'm actually going to take this circle and make it white and then come back to our ellipse and make it slightly smaller. So let's say we make this 0.29 in width and 0.29 in height. So now we pretty much just have a black uh, circle, a black outline. Uh, but there's a reason why I created it this way. And that's so later on we could hide things underneath it. Uh, and that would be a lot easier. If I just had this outline, uh, then maybe, you know, if we put things through the circle, then you could see them through this outline. When anything we put kind of behind this, I want the circle to eclipse uh, that design. Uh, and so moving forward, I'll move up a little bit. And Let's say we add one more circle and we'll copy these, hit control C and then select off and hit control V to paste. And again, I'll plug this in to the foreground of our last merge. And now we have a circle on top of a circle on top of a circle. Uh, but this circle is actually going to be a little bit bigger. Let's go with 0.31. Yeah, 0.31. And with that circle a little bit bigger, I'm actually going to disconnect it from these and actually scoot it underneath just to kind of help you guys understand how these are working right now. So if I move this underneath and then attach this to the foreground of this merge and then attach this to the foreground of our first merge, now we have a white circle actually under a white circle and under a black circle. So there should be three layers here. You can't see that because there's a uh, white background. But if I were to change the color, you could see that we have that white circle or that other circle underneath. I'm actually going to leave this white. And then one thing I'm going to do is add a drop shadow to this merge. And so if I click control space and type in drop shadow, now we have a drop shadow, which will plug in. And now we can kind of see the different layers we have. Um, one thing I'm going to do is kind of form this shadow a little differently. If I go to the drop distance, I can move this down a little closer. And then to our blur, I'll actually take this down as well, leaving a little bit more clean of a design. Can move our strength up a little bit. That's nice. I like that. Uh, one thing you can do to clean these up is if you right click uh, just on the empty space here, you can go up to uh, line up all tools to grid and then you can right click again and go arrange to to grid. That way when you move things around, they'll move on the grid and things will stay kind of nice and tidy. I can also hit control and then move my mouse wheel up and down to zoom this whole node section. Uh, and so right now we pretty much have our circle over here which is beautiful. I love it. One thing we're going to do is actually put text on top of the circle. Uh, so if I click on a text node, and then of course, again, we have to plug this into a merge, 
And then we can plug this merge into the foreground of our highest circle, our white circle on top of all these. Uh, we'll change the text color to black and then type in the, because of course I'm gonna make the Modern Filmmaker logo or a new Modern Filmmaker logo. It's not what I've used before, uh, but we'll just make something new and, and exciting from here. Uh, so with our text selected, I'm just gonna change the font to something that is more my style. Let's go with this one. This is a, it's a favorite of mine. And then instead of bold, we'll go to black. And then we'll move this up a bit and come to shade. And we'll make, we'll go to this text outline under properties and click that just to kind of give the its own vibe. I like that. And then what we can do is make another text and plug this into another merge. And then we'll actually put this under our first text. You could put it over, but I just like to put things kind of in line as, as how they're gonna look. And this is gonna be slightly under the. So I'll plug our old text into the foreground of this merge and then this merge into the foreground of our circle. And one thing I can do is rename these with F2. I can name this top circle. And then this one I can label middle circle and then bottom circle. Just so it's a little less confusing. And then here we know we have our text one and two. And so in text two, I'm gonna change this to black and then we'll write modern. And I'm gonna go back to our same font that I'm a big fan of. And maybe I'll go back to black as well. And I'm gonna scale this up. And now it's kind of coming out of the circle, but one thing we can do is with our very last circle, the top circle, uh, we can use this mask to hide and to, and to contain our text. So everything that we plug in here uh, will not be shown unless it's inside this circle, kind of giving us a little bit more uniformity and give us a little bit more design as well. So if I take the output of this uh, ellipse and plug it into the mask of our text one, or actually our text two, where modern is, boom. Now modern is kind of hidden behind that text. Uh, and I like that, I like that a lot. And so if I go to our text one, I'll scoot this up a little bit, maybe size it down. Or you could, you know, if you wanted, you could plug this in our ellipse mask into our text one as well. And you could make this as big as you want, make it stand out a little bit more if, if you wanted to. I personally, I think I'm just gonna leave it small. So I'm gonna control Z back down to what we had. And then I'm even gonna make our text two slightly smaller. In the text um, of modern, I'll go to size and just pull this down a little bit. Yeah, that's good. I'll move these nodes up. And then what I'll do is actually just grab the text two and merge four. Hit control C and copy that. Control V, click this outside. And then again, I'll plug our text two merge into the foreground of our text, our new text, and then plug that into our foreground of our circle. And that way these are all like layers. It's just pretty much like the layer workflow for Fusion. Uh, it just kind of helps me keep things clean. I love working in Fusion like this. And then with this last one, I'll type in Filmmaker and I'll go to the layout, slide this down, and maybe I'll make this a different font. I'll make this Intel One design to be different. And I'll come, instead of regular, I'll make it light. So each kind of layer of text has its own feel. And I'll make this pretty small. And then I'll stretch Filmmaker out like that. That's pretty cool. And then there's one other thing that I could do uh, just to create a little bit more design elements. And so if I, slide all these up 
And then I copy our filmmaker text, our last text that we added. Control C, click off into this blank space, Control V, and then do that same plug into the foreground, plug into the foreground. Let's get this back over just to keep things clean. And then one thing I'm going to do is just erase filmmaker. I'm going to anchor uh, the the horizontal anchor. I'm going to move to the left, and I'm going to. Put in about seven X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to move these over. I'm going to move our tracking back to normal. Back to where it was originally. And then I'm actually going to space these X's out to fit in between our text. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and then start spacing these with the space bar. And then I'll click over, space these out, whoops. And of course, I bet the Photoshop people that are watching right now are like, this is ridiculous. I wouldn't have to do this if this was Photoshop, but you also couldn't animate it. So I don't know what to tell you. And then make one more, let's see, space here. We'll make one more X. And then from there, kind of based on how it looks, I might make it a little bit smaller and then move the tracking up. And then I can go back and get rid of some of these spaces. This might seem a little crazy, but this is just how I would do it to add a little bit more flair into the design itself. You have to come back and add some spaces. So, I mean, just get creative. That's kind of the whole point of the program is to do different things, unleash your creativity, do whatever works for you. That looks pretty good. see one more space there boom and now we kind of have these little X's in between and I made that on a different text so we could kind of control the size and the positioning here really nice really simple I like that and, and then from here one thing I can also do is animate this circle onto the screen so if I go to our very last um, circle I can make a keyframe in, let's say, the width and the height. And then at key at, at frame zero, and then let's say come out to frame 30, make two more keyframes in the width and the height. And then I'll go back to our frame zero where our first keyframes are and just shove this down to zero. Now, one other thing we'll need to do is plug this ellipse circle from our bottom circle we actually need to make that the mask of that merge so we need to make the bottom circle mask also the mask of the bottom circle merge boom now it's hidden everything because that is the mask that reveals everything this is a cool little animation that we can throw in um, along the way and we will make a few more animations and we'll smoothen that animation out by going to the splines and then we'll click our ellipse and click this full screen zoom to fit button. And then we can click our last keyframe, select our last keyframe, hit S. And then it'll give us a handlebar that we can click on and hold alt so it doesn't go up and down and we can drag that out. And then we'll click this other handle Hold Alt so it doesn't, you know, just moves one way and then make that the same distance. And that way it should animate on really smooth. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, we can animate the text as well really easily uh, by, let's say, coming to frame 15. We'll go to text number one, go to our layout, and in the center position, we'll move this off to the right. And then maybe come up here to frame 35 and move this back to 
0.5 where it's in the middle. And now that'll slide onto the screen. Of course, we'll also want to smooth that out. So if we click off our ellipse and then click zoom to fit as well, we can click our last, this is our text keyframes. We can click our last keyframe, hit S and then hold Alt and grab this handle, bring this out to make a smooth ease in. Boom, I love that. And then of course with modern, we can do the same thing on a slightly different timing, just so they're like, whoosh, whoosh, you know, so everything kind of flows in together. You guys know I like a good feeling animation. A good feeling animation is almost everything to me. So uh, if we go to about here, go to layout, click the center, and then move up to, let's say frame 40, make another keyframe there, and then go back to the beginning and move this off to the left. And then in our splines, you see we have our last keyframe here, and we can hit S on that, grab our handle, hold Alt to keep it uh, on that same plane. And, oh yeah, that's nice. And maybe even drag this last keyframe out a little further to maybe frame 45. Yeah, that feels really good. And we can do the same thing with film uh, filmmaker on the bottom. Let's say at frame 20, we create our first keyframe in the layout center position. And then at frame 45, we make another keyframe, then go back to the first one. And we're gonna slide this one down. This will come up from the bottom. And then of course in our spline editor, select that last keyframe. And actually, let me get rid of these other text just so I know I have the right keyframe selected and don't, nothing else. Hit S, hold Alt, drag this out. And nice. And now I'm going to do something a little different with our dots here. And instead of slide these on, I'm actually going to write them on. Under the text properties, under write on, this will actually write things on. If you see, if I move this down and up, it's writing on those X's. So after everything slides up and slides into place, then at about 40, about frame 40, I'll make a keyframe and move the write on all the way down to zero. And then maybe come up to 60 and move the write on all the way up. And I'm not going to ease that. I'm just going to leave it as is. That way things are like, whoosh, 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 and then did, 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 did. So they should look pretty sick. Nice. So one thing we'll need to do is make this ellipse, this uh, top circle. We're going to make that mask the mask for all the other text as well. Yeah. That way when they're not being used, they're kind of hidden there. Nice. And so maybe we can make our... Our X's that write on, we can pull these over to, yeah, frame 55. Let's try that. Nice. Maybe you know, a little faster than that even, up to frame 50. Boom. That's pretty sick. And if you guys are enjoying this video, definitely click that like button. I got one more thing I want to do just to kind of make this uh, that much more sick. So if I close these splines and then hold our control button and zoom out a little bit, uh, one more thing I can do, let's say hmm, we're going to make a, another merge. Let's make a, just a random merge here. We'll pipe this into, uh, we'll pipe our circle and text into the foreground and then we'll make a new merge and a new background, a new background, and we'll plug this into the foreground here, and this merge into the foreground of our first merge. Then we'll plug this into our drop shadow. That way everything will be, will go through the drop shadow because I want to drop shadow on everything. So might as well just use that same drop shadow for, for everything in the end. And then with this, you see we, now we have a black background because we technically just created a layer under our circle, but above our floor. We still have our white floor 
here. Um, but then we have now our black background under uh, or above our floor, but under our circle. And I want to create a, a custom shape with this. And one way I'm going to do that is uh, by dragging out um, our second window where I have our bottom circle. And I'm actually going to use this to kind of dictate how I make this shape. I'm going to use the grids to make a shape. So if I come to our polygon, you can pretty much draw whatever you want with the polygon. So I'm going to draw kind of like an arrow type thing. Um, so let me go from this point in the grid, kind of level that out just to make sure that we'll level here. And then I'll come down to here. I think this is actually the plane that we're on. And then I'll make another dot, let's say here. And actually, I'm going to make this one up here. And then we'll make one right. Let's see. Right here and here. Boom. I love that. That's a cool, that's a cool little shape there. Um, very simple very clean and maybe I'll make another one but instead of just drawing a whole nother one I'm just going to select all these copy and then paste and I'll plug this into the foreground of this one and we'll just move the second shape next to it and one thing I do want to do let's say it's like Let's say it's like this, and then I'll move these to a more pleasing aesthetic shape, like, like so. And I'm still looking at the grid on the left-hand side to kind of determine how this looks. Ooh, that's nasty. I love that. Uh, and so let's slide this down. Um, a little bit and we'll copy and we'll paste plug this into the merge below and then we can kind of take this and do the exact same thing but one thing I would like to do is kind of reverse the shape and uh, probably the easiest way to do that to be honest is to make a transform we'll need to transform here anyway and then in the transform I can flip it And then with it flipped, I can move it up to make that kind of shape. That's nice. I'm really liking that. And so if I click these and just move these down a little bit so they fit a little better, boom. Uh, and then one thing we could simply do to animate all these. So right now, this is our group. Of, of arrows. So if I were to move this over here, you'd see all three of them. After the merge five, I'm going to make a transform. And once everything comes up at 35, I'm going to make a keyframe in the size. And then I'm going to run down to, let's say 55, make another keyframe in the size, go back to the first keyframe for size and shrink it. And then in the splines, of course, let me get all these out of the way because this is just getting messy. This is just a messy mess. Uh, let's see. In the transform, let's click on that last keyframe, hit S, hold Alt, pull it out, and oh yeah, that's sick. And so while these dots come across, this, these things kind of come out too, which is kind of nasty. I mean, that right there 
is how you make and animate a logo in DaVinci Resolve. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, you might as well just click the like button. I mean, just click it for goodness sakes. And if you didn't enjoy the video, maybe just click the like button anyway. It'd really help the channel out. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I always reply. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you like videos on DaVinci Resolve. And as always, I'm Marcel, and this has been The Modern Filmmaker. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.